things a bit in reverse. You, 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 actually, you didn't, but generally the point that you mentioned usually puts things in reverse. Uh, it's it's not exactly Linux that has to change. It's really the developers who have to try and accommodate the market that's currently doesn't offer them as many users as they get on Windows. The same goes for drivers, sometimes in the kernel, but the kernel, Linux, uh, is, uh, is actually a case where the momentum has changed. So now all kinds of broadband and uh, um, uh, all kinds of companies to do with mobile applications. One of the big barriers before it was that you couldn't get wireless to work so well with Linux. And now all the major companies have I think most of them have actually joined the Linux Foundation and they provide drivers. So now when you install a Linux distro on a laptop, you, you, you're pretty sure that it will pick up the Wi-Fi and it will pick up all kinds of components because the drivers are basically supplied by the makers of these devices. Uh, what we need is the application layer. I kind of agree with you. We lack some of the specialized applications and hopefully in years to come we will get the uh, momentum necessary perhaps through Android to an extent. We'll get more companies trying to make things, uh, write them for example in Java which is more easily portable to other platforms even if it's originally in Dalvik. But, uh, Maybe they will find a way to accommodate both for the mobile market with Android. Maybe actually Android is now going up the, the scale to desktops and laptops and so on. Uh, so eventually I believe we will have this App Store. Uh, I think Android has about like 30, you know, 300,000 applications now for it. Uh, I think Apple has got a bit more like 400. 400 and something uh, thousand uh, applications. I believe both platforms will have a very, very big number of applications uh, compared to the over a million, I think, that Windows generally has somewhere around the web, but not in the store. Uh, and the issue of application and portability, and even things like games and mapping software, uh, will be buried somewhere along the lines of those shops, like the app stores. The only issue I see with that is those stores very much remind me of Palladium. Uh, which is the whole uh, TPM type thing, the trusted computing thing, where one company decides for you what's a safe application, what you can install, what it can remove for you, without you actually having any vote on the on the issue. Uh, so that's a whole different subject, I guess. For Michael, over to you for the final words. And it's going to be another question for Roy. <laughs> I'll go for so, it. So I guess I guess it's not. I don't know. I don't know how how I, something I want to know, Roy. I think you and I. We we've disagreed here, and I think we you know we don't fully agree on a lot of this stuff. Um, but overall, I think there's a lot more agreement than disagreement. And so I guess I my question for you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn over my last word to you, is um, you've said some things about my views in the past, and you've you expressed your ideas. Um, do you still have those views? And and what do you see of of our differences? I mentioned this briefly uh, without mentioning names or something just a while ago. I think that if I like, and, and, and generally people cannot really say that against me, uh, and cannot actually claim hypocrisy here, I think if a person likes Linux, the safe thing to do is to go to a forum that promotes Linux or to create your own website, which then invites people who might subscribe to your views to come and to read the site. I've always been a, 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 a person who will say, well, try not to approach somebody else's yard and try to change them over. One of the things that I, I generally don't like in all sorts of walks of life, and things like religions, for example, is when people are trying to go over the fence and trying to change people or trying to intrude people or trying to tell them they're wrong about something. I think they have to come by their own accord. Uh, they have to be a, to, to approach you if they want to, if they think they're wrong about something, they can come to you and ask, can you show me something else, or can you explain to me why this is not right? Uh, but trying to come to people and say to them, well, you're wrong, and I want to change you, or I want to, uh, uh, to tell you why you, you, you basically should, should listen to me, I think that's coming across as a bit abrasive, and I, I don't think it's very constructive in general. It just tends to take a forum, in some cases, which is focused on a certain topic, uh, for example, I know in certain uh, what's called a site called the Daily Costs, uh, uh, when they have people coming to the forum, that's a very d democratic type forum, and start talking about how Bush is great, it kind of derails their forum because they don't want to have these very basic discussions and flame wars. They want to talk about ideas more than have those fights with people who are not really intended to be in the forum. So basically, people want to disrupt the forums and to try to change the subject to something that it's not about. 
Uh, and that's the uh, yeah. So 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 you asked the question, and without like making accusations or anything, I I just basically always try to make sure if I have views to make, I make them in a way that uh, it's an opt-in. So a person has to choose to listen to me. I'm not going to impose my views on somebody else or enter somebody else's yard and put my voice there. Uh, so so this this way, I will not I will not annoy people by going to them and trying to change their point of view. The only way they will be annoyed is they come to me, which they don't have to. I'm not imposing it on them. If they come to me because they don't like what I say in my place, that's a, that's a different thing. But do you see my views as being anti-Linux? This is, I think, this is the, the longest we've uh, talked about in, uh, views. In, in the context in which we speak about it now, we're talking mostly about Usenet, uh, the, uh, the Compos, uh, uh, Compound, comp Compost Linux Advocacy. Uh, that's a, an advocacy forum about the benefits of Linux. And in this forum, you sometimes tend to maybe not, not notice the fact that you're uh, disrupting, you basically go against the, uh, the, the goals of the forum. So as the stated goal is about the benefits of Linux, and if you go there and you start to talk about the flaws of Linux, that's not exactly what the forum is about. Uh, so that kind of derails the forum. <laughs> I see advocacy as looking at the good and the bad to talk about how we can how we can make things better. How can we get? I mean, we talked about some of it here. How can we get? Um, or what that's, are our hopes for uh, having different you know, KDE and GNOME work together? Yeah, uh, that that's the concern type of approach where a person approaches a group and pretends to be concerned. So I know this trick, for example, in, uh, in, in creationist and atheist groups, for example, the person who comes in and says, I'm concerned for you or I'm concerned for us, and then try to criticize the surroundings. And that's one way of trying to be embracive, abrasive, uh, not, not so embracive of the community, but actually being against them or trying to say, oh, you're delusional or you're irrational about this. And, and you, you it's hard to see that sometimes, but this is what the sur this is the effect you have on the surroundings. If you go to the dinner table and you can make statements that would make people uncomfortable, like political or religious or technology, in, in the case of a panel, if you go to Microsoft and you sit on the table and talk about, oh, you know, Linux is great and Google is great, you should use, you know, it's not going to be very helpful because the people at the table, you know, they're not going to like it. Uh, so it's just, you know, in Rome be a Roman, in so, so, so to speak. Before I, before Michael just comes back um, with any sort of uh, reply to that, can I just add? Um, there's quite a few people in um, in the uh, Cola channel, that the Cola news group, that uh, have different views. Um, now, Michael, I hate talking about you in the third person because you're with us on the show, but <laughs> That's okay. So, okay, but so, certainly jump in as well if, you, if there's anything if I say that you think's wrong. But uh, Michael is. Um, probably a victim of what we had uh, John I mentioned before and that's in a forum it's very very difficult to gauge what somebody's actually saying and how somebody's actually saying something because we're dealing with a text only format you're not hearing emotion you're not hearing passion you're certainly not getting the gist of how they're presenting something and mistakes can be made certainly in Michael's case um, when we've had chats and I, I've, I've chatted quite a few times now with Michael he presents some valid points and I think that's healthy for the for the Cola channel uh, uh, news group. It's um, I think if everybody was agreeing with each other in the channels and how great Linux was and there was no issues, then it wouldn't be a place to go. I certainly like to have a healthy debate, and I, I get the impression that Michael is presenting these things not because just because they're his own views, but because he does like, like engage uh, like engaging in in a healthy debate as well. And it would be a rather boring place if everybody was just patting each other on the back and agreeing. So I'm sort of more with Michael in uh, in this respect. Um, I think there's been a lot of misrepresentation, a lot of mis a misunderstanding, um, a lot of people shifting uh, handles and Im impersonating each other, which has caused a massive confusion, which is made even worse by having a text-only format like uh, you know, Icola. So uh, to, to be fair to Michael, obviously I'm going to give it over to him for the last word, but certainly from what we've discussed, and th there's nothing outrageous about Michael's views, there's nothing uh, unusual about Michael's views. So hopefully in the future when people read uh, his things and read what people might be saying, they maybe consider this audio cast as well. Uh, Michael, sorry, over to you. Okay, this time I guess I'll keep the last word and I won't send it off to make more discussion. <laughs> I, going back to Cola, I'm all for the healthy debates and I'm all for, you know, if, if, if Roy, if other people say, you know, that's not a discussion that you should even have in here, I'm even open to that. The place where 
which I think that the discussion falls apart, and this happens on on both sides, if you will, the quote unquote troll and the quote unquote advocate side, is is when people just flat out make things up about other people. I'm often there's a bunch of the quote unquote advocates in there who say that I'm. In-